Hey, this is Paul from Twist and Shout, and welcome to the greatest concert venue on earth, Red Rocks. So what you're looking at here is the parking lot just below the stage at Red Rocks. And on July 7th, 1978, when I was just a punk kid, this was the first place I stopped. My friend Joel Burke and I stopped right here, looked over this rail, and right as we got here, a limo pulled up, and Jerry Garcia came out of his limo, waved at us, he was smoking a cigarette and had a huge smile on his face. And he waved at us and he's like, hey guys, glad to be here. And it, it portended an amazing weekend of music. And it was. So again, I'm Paul Epstein. This is Red Rocks Amphitheater, uh, my favorite place possibly on earth. Um, and we are here to talk about and celebrate the Grateful Dead. Uh, they are releasing a CD of Red Rocks, July 8th, 1978, comes out on Friday. In addition, there's going to be a box set coming from Grateful Dead Records of the entire July uh, 1978 run of shows. So we'll have both the 7th and the 8th, both Red Rock shows. These two shows, uh, many people who know me know that I am pretty dedicated in my love for this band and uh, I have been a deadhead for a long time. The roots of my deadheadness go to uh, the late 60s, but these two shows, uh, July 7th and 8th, 1978, that's when I turned and became a died in the world deadhead willing to travel, see them five nights in a row, and I devoted a lot of the next uh, 20 years or so of my life until I bought Twist and Shout, uh, and, or we, we bought Twist and Shout in 88, so that was 10 years later, but I remained traveling deadhead for probably another decade after that, so, uh, or half a decade till Jerry died. So, it's a very important shows for me, and this CD, I think, is really going to be a special item for all deadheads, especially Colorado deadheads. Uh, the connection that the Grateful Dead managed to um, work with Red Rocks, and which lasted over many years. They, they, they did many, many shows until just recently when Widespread Panic got the new uh, record for the most shows played at Red Rocks. The Grateful Dead for years were the band that play, had played the most shows at Red Rocks and certainly had sold out, I believe, every one of them. Um, so, it's coming out Friday. I'm gonna take you up to the exact spot I was sitting at at this show, and maybe we can talk about the show itself a little there. So I'm standing here right in front of where they set up the soundboard at Red Rocks. This is where I was sitting on July 7th, 1978. I'm about five rows back, dead center. Uh, not my first Grateful Dead show, but a really, really important one to me. Um, they were uh, not new to Colorado, but they had not been here since uh, they, were, they played one show in 77. And before that, it had been uh, uh, three years, three years since they, or four years since they had played in Colorado. So they were, there was a whole new batch of, of fans eager to see them. This was the first time they played uh, in Red Rocks. And when they walked out on stage on the 7th, it was really obvious 
um, that they were blown away by the whole scene, seeing the crowd, seeing the rocks. And as I mentioned already, they've been here most of the afternoon, so they've been soaking it in. But when they actually walked out on stage, huge moment. So those two shows, the seventh, just amazing. And then the eighth, which is the show that they're releasing as a standalone CD, I think is now considered in probably the top 10 Grateful Dead concerts of all time. They seem to be possessed by some kind of unbelievable energy that night, and they did an amazing set list. Everything played to the hilt. Jerry is entirely excited and uh, uh, plays every song as hard as he can and sings with such gusto. And they also did a number of really interesting things. They did Terrapin Station for an encore. They did the Warren Zevon song, Werewolves of London. As in, They did a free song encore, which is pretty rare. And the show was long and fantastic. And I really can't, uh, you know, it, the Grateful Dead have released so much stuff and there's been so much stuff talked about with them. It's hard not to, for it to sound like hyperbole. However, if you're going to buy, you know, one Grateful Dead concert from the late 70s era, you know, which was kind of their one of their last great eras, this is the one. It's really a fantastic show. There's no place like Red Rocks. There's nothing like a Grateful Dead concert. And here, both come together. It's the best. Okay, so in addition to the unbelievable natural beauty of Red Rocks and the natural bowl sound effect, because it carries sound, originally there would be an opera singer at the bottom there and you wouldn't need amplification. In addition to that, what makes Red Rocks so amazing is this view that you see here of Denver and the plains in the distance. That is such a huge part of it. And I know, you know, Every time I hear that Willie Nelson song where he says, the bright lights of Denver are shining like diamonds, I figure he had to be at Red Rocks when he wrote that. Uh, it's such an amazing, amazing view. And it's, I've told my wife, when I die, she can scatter my ashes here because this is really, many of the best experiences of my life have been at Red Rocks. And this is it right here. So anyway, Grateful Dead, July 1978, Friday at 3 o'clock at Twist and Shout, we're going to have a listening party for the uh, July 8th concert, and you can come and check it out and uh, get an early listen to it and pick it up and uh, celebrate this amazing confluence of natural beauty, uh, the, the laid-back wonder that makes Colorado the hippie center of the universe, and of course, the Grateful Dead. So this is Paul from Twist and Shout, and I'll see you at the store on Friday.